this whole experience of being here has made a profound impression on me personally and also my my ways of thinking as a composer, and that's it's all thanks to Charles. I became a percussionist after studying piano and realized that the world of sound is very wide and open to th things other than conventional musical instruments. My occupation has been in radio and also I've done a lot of work as an artistic administrator. KPFA and Other Minds, those have been my main occupations. Charles was a uh, composer for the Dancers Workshop Company, which was founded and led by Anna Halperin. And I think that's the connection between me and Charles, because I knew her. The beginning of Other Minds was a funny thing. I was on tour of Australia with uh, Carol Law, who's a visual artist, and my wife. And uh, we had been scheduled to go on to Europe, and we didn't want to go because of the nuclear accident at Chernobyl. So we decided to drive through the Southwest. And we went to visit John Lifton and Pamela Zolin, who have the Telluride Institute there. And they were putting on something called the Ideas Festival. And John Lifton said, boy, I really miss being around composers. We're kind of isolated out here. Charles, you know a lot of composers. Why don't we do a music festival out here? So we started with uh, a composer to composer festival in 1988. In Telluride, it was a very wonderful thing because basically the town is tiny. It seemed like everyone in the town was in it. They opened the balcony or on the side, up on the stage. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful time there. We had Brian Eno from England and Peter Skulthar from Australia and uh, a lot of American composers uh, meeting and talking. And uh, by the end of the week, they were so well acquainted and so friendly with each other that the three or four concerts that we did went off without a hitch. Everybody was in love with everybody else and nobody wanted to leave till you ride. But that really couldn't sustain itself because it was so remote and there was no real audience other than the people who were involved. I got a call from Jim Newman, who lived in San Francisco and had been listening to me on the radio for 23 years on KPFA. And he said, Charles, is there anything we can do to keep you involved in the music scene in San Francisco? And I said, well, Jim, it's funny you ask because I just have been doing this very successful event in Colorado, and I'd love to do it here. That's when we, we started talking about we, we should be doing something for new music because there wasn't that much going on here. So this was the first festival, and we had to think of a name for it. In the year preceding the first festival, John Cage, who was a great inspiration to all of us, passed on. And he had a very dismissive, unsigned obituary in The New Yorker. Said that John Cage could have been thought to have composed music in other people's minds. And so the idea of other minds, it just seemed to connect. And so that's when the first Other Minds Festival began. We had the Cronus Quartet, we had Phil Glass from New York, John Jang, Chinese American from San Francisco. Conlon Nancaro and Trimpen, Robert Ashley, um, Meredith Monk. Well, the festival was an enormous success here, but th what was great about it was that the composers who came enjoyed four or five days out here in this beautiful natural environment first. This is the one festival where you have this kind of residency that takes place before any public performances. These few days that we can spend together are precious days that, that I don't think happens anywhere else I know, to be honest. <laughs> the situation, I think, is really wonderful. It, it, it promotes a, a community and a very egalitarian atmosphere, which I like a lot. Here you have people meeting from across the globe, from different generations, from different backgrounds. And uh, it's, like, it's like this and you become a family. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. Carol and I were co-directors at the Jurassic Resident Artist Program here in Woodside, in California. And we had um, months where the facility wasn't used. I really look forward to um, 
putting together like a little jigsaw puzzle all the pieces that will make a well-rounded festival. Some older people, some younger people, uh, always an emphasis on female composers, people of color, instrumentalists and um, composers who have just done something so spectacularly wonderful. Charles is a connector, I mean, he connects people. I think it's very important, you know, that, that it supports the community of composers. You have like these islands across the globe where people are gathering and where someone has made, um, made it possible for, for these things to happen, for artists to meet, for new music to be heard. for experiments to be made. And, and Charles, who, who is uh, the primary force of this festival, is, is one of these uh, glowing uh, <laughs> islands <laughs> that, uh, that uh, unifies the whole, the whole world. Composers don't tend to hang out much together or share ideas. And this is an opportunity for them to, to share ideas and present themselves and what they do and their interests to our fellow composers. It's special to be able to, to meet with the other composers instead of just showing up and you know, hearing your piece and hearing the other pieces and, and maybe saying hello, but this is different. We may come from the same source, but the, the surface details are very different. And these things sort of percolate through the years. We really feel that we belong to an international community, that people are interested in each other, take care of each other, and that we, we are on the same search, we are on the same journey. We all we have the same concerns, really. How do you write music that can communicate ideas clearly? Why do you write music? You know, where, where do you live? What are the things that influence you? See, these things are common to all composers, and it's lovely to just remind yourself of that. This week we've enjoyed the company of 10 artists from around the world who are going to be presenting their work on the Other Minds Festival, which will take place at the SF Jazz Center in San Francisco.
Coming to another Minds Festival is a process of discovery, usually of composers you don't know much about until you get there. But once you do, you're bound to find somebody who will just send you over the moon and you'll just fall in love with these people because they're so brilliant and so unexpected. For me, it's very clear that uh, the avant-garde music is needed. And that we need other expressions than the mainstream in order to see the world differently, in order to inspire to other thinking, to other minds, to other uh, ways of uh, looking at the world. As far as I'm concerned, we need to listen to everything. Every sound is some form of intelligence and information. I think what's important to me is to always remember the feeling I had about music as a child, when I didn't know I was going to be a composer or be a musician, which was just sheer joy and delight in sounds and, you know, that, that idea of, you know, playing and immersing yourself in the world of sound. I tend to have lists and lists of interesting people that I've encountered, and I realize now I'm never going to run out of Mavericks. And so the overall idea is, can I find one or two or three people that I'm really excited about so I can follow their careers and be interested in them? He has created a legacy um, by doing what he does. I mean, he's uh, presented innumerable composers from all over the place, different styles, um, all of that uh, in a very wonderful way. It's a um, real privilege to serve some of these composers who otherwise wouldn't have a place to perform in San Francisco or would not be heard on the internet because of our massive collection of recordings of interviews and concerts uh, that we maintain at our archive, which is called radiome.org. The effects of this will go on, so for instance, this, these few days, relatively few days, will last me probably the rest of my life. The things I'll be thinking about, it'll just, it carries on. I know there are people who are equally invested in this idea of supporting unusual composers and musicians. And I think the idea is bigger than one person. Uh, the fact that um, I've done it for a couple of decades is only the beginning, and there, there will be other people who can take over the cause and keep it going. It's the idea that's important, not the individual who's doing it.